Tonight's top EU stories from the unit website include The UK rules out a pound for an independent Scotland EU opens a probe into smart card chip cartel Austerity throughout Europe shows little growth benefit Plus, Spain has the European Union's largest deficit, now even larger than Greece I'm Rick Timmis and this is the unit Nightly News First, from our homepage, a study prepared by the Treasury in London said an official currency union between Scotland and the rest of the UK is unlikely to work well without political union. Now that's odd, they said that about the euro, but uh, I think time has shown them to be, oh yes, absolutely right. This is a good article that sets out the service details of what is taking place. However, considering these proposals more holistically, Mr Salmon's ideas do not make sense. He's already strongly suggesting that an independent Scotland would become a member of the EU. Well, the EU's vision is a federal superstate where the member states are all regions and all are governed from the centre in Brussels. How can that be described as independent? If Scotland were proposing something like the Icelandic model, where it codified a new meritable and democratic constitution and set itself as a global trader internationally, that would make perfect sense and would certainly support the long-term interests of the Scottish people. Infineon, Renesas and Philips have all confirmed that they have received an official statement of objection from the European Commission. The Commission said at the time that it had reason to believe the companies had coordinated their behaviour to keep prices of smart card chips artificially high. Smart card chips are used in mobile phone SIM cards, bank cards, passports and identity cards. A successful investigation could lead to lower prices for smart chips and a more competitive market. Of course, the usual approach by the corporates at this point is to lobby for legislative policy that creates a market advantage. And our research folk will keep an eye out for that too. The austerity pain pursued by a number of European countries led to very little gain in 2012. Figures from Eurostat, the European Union Statistics Office, showed that many of the countries hit hardest by Europe's financial crisis, such as Portugal and Spain, saw their budget deficits increase last year, even though they have pursued strict austerity policies designed to get their public finances back into shape. One of the key economic justifications for austerity is under attack. In 2010, US economist Kenneth Rogoff and Carmen Reinhardt wrote a paper arguing that growth slows once a government's debt tops 90% of its economic output. Their findings suggested that reducing debt, as Europe's most troubled economies have been pressed to do, could increase growth. But economists at the University of Massachusetts who studied Rogoff and Reinhardt's calculations have pointed to errors and omissions that cast doubt on the idea that high government debt will significantly slow economic growth. Oddly enough, me and my dog Jake were discussing this technical merits of said austere economic policy and we figured that you can't run an economy based upon hairdressers who cut hair for accountants who do bookkeeping for solicitors that then sue hairdressers for giving accountants bad haircuts. You see, O-level geography taught me that you need primary and secondary industry. You have to create something of intrinsic value. There is no intrinsic value in a piece of paper with ink on it. No matter how many zeros you put behind the euro symbol, you still can't eat it or run your car on it. Spain's budget deficit was the largest in the European Union last year, underlining the challenge faced by Prime Minister Mariano Rajoy as he prepares a new plan to foster an economic recovery. As we just saw in the previous story, this policy of austerity is not working. The evidence on the ground demonstrates this. Now, here is a line of thought for you. Austerity isn't working. The banks are still failing. Unemployment is growing, so tax revenues are falling. So governments have less money to tackle their deficit. The Troika is closing the taps on bailout funds, as we saw in Cyprus. So what are the options that are left on the table? 
further and deeper austerity, bond and investor defaults, forced asset and wealth levies. What are your thoughts? Comment or send us an email and let us know. Today in our video library, as you know, we have written and produced a new documentary, Betrayed, which we have submitted to the Operation Paul Revere contest at Infowars.com. We thought it would be interesting to take a look at some of the other videos that have been produced, and so through the month of May, I will pick out a daily Operation Paul Revere contest entry and provide a link to it on YouTube. Now, speaking of YouTube, you could really help us a great deal with our documentary and contest entry. By subscribing to our channel, rating our film Betrayed, either like or dislike, but I would prefer like, please, and most importantly, sharing it with as many people as you possibly can. So, without further ado, today's video, which I have added to our Operation Paul Revere YouTube playlist, is The After. I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for the Unit Nightly News. I'll see you soon. You can get lots more news stories and information on our website, theunit.com. You can get in touch with us there, and we particularly welcome your letters and points of view. You can follow us on Twitter. Our Twitter username is the e Unit. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel for all of our regular updates. You can join me and the rest of the team for interactive discussion and debate on Google Plus at any time. Are you looking for a public speaker for your event? Our public speakers are happy to come and discuss Britain's relationship with the EU in your area at no cost. If you would like to add interest and value to your group event, then get in touch with us via the Word section of our website. Join us in our live Question Time style online show, The Unit Interactive, broadcast live on our website, theunit.com, and globally via thehangoutshow.com. Join our community on Google+, and you can be part of the wider public voice, united in freedom, liberty, and independence. Simply join our community, the unit on Google+. Links to the community page are below. <laughs>